Y'all are so sweet and kind. I tell you what, I think I'll keep you. <laughs> uh, I know, I know I am. I know. Every time I'm, I'm away from you guys, I, I really miss you. I miss, the, I miss the time that we spend together just knowing that when I come into the presence of other people that love Jesus, you know, because you're out there in the world. And you don't encounter people that love Jesus all the time. Right. That's rare when you're, when you're just in the world. And um, so thank you. Thank you for, for being my family and being uh, who you are because it, it's attached to my heart. And, and I hope that uh, we're all attached because that's what the body of Christ is supposed to do. Right. It's supposed to attach and, and become suppliers of one another. Amen? Well, are you ready to learn? Yes. I'm ready to teach. Good. So uh, you got to get your ears on. And uh, it's so funny because that's what I do to the kids. Put your ears on. Get, you know, open up your heart and get ready so that so God can come in and so that he can teach you something today, a little bit about yourself and a little bit about him. And uh, he's ready to do that but only if you're ready. So let's, uh, let's receive today. All right, we're going to talk about the last two points of our vision. And uh, we talked about uh, to be a ministry of excellence, properly reflecting the image of Christ. We talked about to move from religion to the reality of a life in Christ. We talked about to educate people in their covenant rights, authority, and responsibilities. Those three points are so vital to our success in life, our success in our ministries. Because I know you think you don't have a ministry, but you do. Every day that you get up to breathe and every day you get up to go beyond your home, and even in your home, there is a ministry in your home. There's a ministry to your children. There's a ministry to yourself. There's a ministry that um, is necessary in order for Christ to begin to grow in our heart and begin to grow to where God intends for us to get to so that we can change lives. Because if we're not changing anything, then I don't think we're doing exactly what God wants and needs us to do. And so sometimes we just need to stop and examine our, ourselves and examine our lives to see who we're touching and who's changing around us. And if it's for the worse, then we really, really do need to stop and, and take a good look and say, okay, God, change me. Um, the changing really starts with us. Most of the time, we think that it starts with somebody else because we like to point the finger and, and never really... Um, take on that responsibility, but uh, it really starts with us. And you'll find that your life will be a whole lot peaceful if we stop judging other people and really begin to start judging ourselves. It'll, it, it'll be so much better. Amen? Amen. So today we're going to talk about two, the last two points, and it's called uh, to make and train disciples of Jesus Christ to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. And to, love, to preach, teach, to love people enough, excuse me, to love people enough to preach, teach, and reach them with the uncompromised word of God in the metropolitan area of Iowa City, Iowa, and the surrounding areas. We're called to be here. We're not called to be in Idaho. We're not called to be in California. We're not called to be in New York City. We're called to be in Iowa City, Iowa, to change lives. And we have to come to a point, as long as we're here, let's make the most of it. And I think every day that, and Pastor Tommy will uh, uh, agree with this, is every day I'm not doing something, I'm wondering why not? And it's true, I probably do need to learn to rest, but I really want to be productive in everything that I put my hands to do. 
I want to see change in people's lives. I want to see the vision of God come to pass. I want to see the purpose of God on the reason why Life Point Christian Faith Center is here because it's here for a purpose and you're part of it. And that's why the, it's so important that the vision is taught to you so that you can fully understand what you're a part of. So you can fully understand your purpose and begin to look within yourself and try to find out what is my part. Because everybody has a part and it supplies. It doesn't d distract or it doesn't subtract, but it supplies. We, we come arm in arm and we begin to do what God has called us to do. I, I was telling somebody just yesterday, I said, I love to pull out the gifts in people's lives. I, everybody comes in here with a gift. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're a good talker, if you're, a good, uh, you're good in cooking, you're good at uh, electronics, you're good at something. I'm good with people. I'm, good at, I'm, a, I'm an encourager. I'm, I, I, I just love to smile. Somebody is good at something, and it's a gift. And it really is a gift from God. And so we have to really um, begin to examine ourselves to see what that gift is to supply to the body of Christ. Because God's not going to look at how well, how much money we made or how many houses we have or how many cars we were able to buy and, and, and all those kind of things. He's looking at what we did with what he gave us. Not what he gave us in material things, but what he gave us in our life and in our abilities, and we did nothing with them. It's like the man with the talent. It's like the, 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 the young people with the talents, and he gave some, and he knew who could handle what. And that's why he only gave that one, one, just to see what he would do with it. And he did exactly what he thought he would probably do, and that's bury it and do nothing. But God didn't call you to, to have a gift of drawing or singing or, 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 or drama or all these wonderful things that God places on the inside of you to just keep for yourself. He really called you to share it and to add to the body and begin to multiply the body with your talent. Um, have you ever asked yourself, what exactly did they mean? when you're listening to someone minister and you and because we, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about the bible and and why it's so important to be in the word as a disciple as one who is called to be a disciple because we're talking about to make and train disciples okay so i know i when i first started and even now i can i can listen to some people and i i, I have to go study I have to, I have to go and, and look it up. Or, or have you ever been in the Bible and, and you go, what does that mean? And, and, or, or even a city or, 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 or just a word or a phrase that, that God would use in some translations. Sometimes I have to use other translations just so I can get a better understanding. Right. But the resources that are available to you are many. And so you should never, especially as a disciple of Christ, never just glaze over the word of God. You should always be one who is ready to study and ready to find out more. Your resources, use a dictionary. I, the, the, the main thing that I use in my study is a dictionary. I take, as you know, because I got lots of definitions, so I hope you got your pen and pad. Yes. I hope you have your Bible. Yes. I hope you have it because you're going to need it today. Amen. You're going to always need it when I get up here. Amen. You're going to always need it. Yes. A dictionary is such a, a, such a wonderful resource to be able to go to and be able to break down what God is doing. You know, I love it when uh, you, can, you can see a rock on the surface but you'd be amazed what's underneath the rock if you were to move the rock or if you begin to start to dig. Even the moisture that begins to develop under a rock has all kinds of life form, all kinds of stuff that's underneath that rock. And, and so 
you never really know what's really there until you start digging. So even with the Word of God, it's the same way. You, 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 you have a surface knowledge or surface understanding, but if you begin to dig, God and the Holy Spirit will begin to, to show you in between the lines and underneath that word what he's really trying to say and what he's trying to say to you. And the most amazing thing about God is that he will, you can read the same passage and get something totally different. You can do a totally different lesson on the same thing. And it's just, it's just amazing to me. Um, use your study notes on the side of the pages of your Bible. If you don't have a study Bible, you need to get one. And what I'm learning, too, as a disciple, I need to invest in myself. I need to buy study things. I need, to, I need to buy things that will develop me and begin to cause me to understand better the things of, of the kingdom of God, to, uh, to better understand who the Holy Spirit is and who Jesus Christ really is and really what is God in my life. That kind of stuff. Those type of answers, those type of questions you should be asking and, and, and studying and really going forth and trying to find out more. Use your concordance to see other references in Scripture that will support what you're studying. That's what it's there for. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you on a rabbit trail that's going to be amazing because you're going to begin to be able to build the blocks and build foundations in your, in your spirit and in your, in your life that cannot be torn down. And no matter what the winds, no matter what happens and the winds blow, it's not going to blow your house down. You know, um, uh, I heard the illustration the other day about grass and about an oak tree. You know, it's easy to pluck up grass, isn't it? I mean, you can take a handful of it and pull it right out of the ground. It's not a, lot, a lot of, not a lot of substance to it, not a lot of foundation to it. But when, you're not going to push an oak tree over. It's not going to go anywhere. We want to be oak trees. Disciples are oak trees. They are ones that will stand in the test of time. And they, they, are, they are voracious in their studying. They're voracious in their attitude. They're voracious in their desire. And they're not going anywhere. I would say, I'm going. I made the decision I'm going, and nobody's going to turn me around. The devil is not going to change my mind and, and cause me to doubt God. He tries, but it doesn't work. With a disciple, it doesn't work. The dictionary has been such a wonderful tool for me to see between the lines of what God is saying. God is always saying more than you see. He's got so much more to tell you. The Holy Spirit is an excellent teacher and a guide. As you study, listen. Listen, because there's something on the inside of you constantly prompting you and, and giving you deeper, deeper understanding. And always have a notepad and a pen next to you so that you can write, so that you can definitely put down good stuff. Amen? Amen. Because he always has good stuff. All right, to make. Let's define to make. Because a lot of times we can, we can glaze over this stuff and, and think we got it, and we don't really truly understand. To make. Why did we say to make a disciple? Because to make is to construct, to build, to assemble, to form, to fashion, to model. We want to form and build and fashion after the image of Christ. Everyone that comes through the doors of Life Point Christian Faith Center. We want you to fully understand that it takes so much more than just coming to church. It, it, it is a dedication and a, a decision to, to go deeper and to go into the deeper things of God. So we want to construct people and build them and assemble them and form them and fashion them after Christ. It says to make and to train, to train, to coach. You ever seen a coach? You know, he's on the sidelines. I love to watch basketball because 
now I have to because I've been around it for 35 years. <laughs> but you have to learn to love something after a while, you know, because it's not going away. So it says to train, to coach. I love those coaches. They're excited. They're, they're, they're in there. They're, they're trying to get those guys to do, do what needs to be done and encourage them. So we're there to, to encourage, to coach, to tutor, to school, and to ground you to ground you in the things of God, to ground you in the word of God. We've met so many people that like the flashy stuff, that like the sensational, and they like when the altar time because they get their hands laid on them and then people fall out in the spirit and, and, and miracles happen. And, and yes, that's all part of the church, but guess what? You, when you go away from here, you gotta be rooted and grounded in something. You got, you got to know who you are. You got to know who God is. You got to know that Jesus has already paid the price for your healing. You got to already know I'm prosperous. You got to already know that, that I am successful in everything I put my hands to do, or the world will begin to drag you back out into a doubt and, and, and fear and all the different things that he does and he does and has done for many, many, many years. So we want to ground you. He says, there's a treasure in the word of God. Now let's go find it. Because it's not always easy to find the treasure. Sometimes you got to dig for that treasure. Let's go to Matthew 13. Jesus uses a parable that I thought was appropriate for this lesson. Matthew 13, 44 through 46. Matthew 13. It's not up there, huh? Is the, is the, is it? Okay, she's working on it. All right. Matthew 13, 44 and 46, through 46. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. 45 says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great Christ went and sold all that he had and bought it. That's what a disciple does. He's willing to sell all that he has and all that he is so that he could find the treasure that is in God. It is the most important thing in his life is to find that treasure, and the treasure is Jesus Christ. And when we fully understand who Jesus Christ is in our life, everything changes. Everything about our lives change. And so a disciple is one who will give up all. What did the disciples do when they met Jesus? They put their nets down. They left their families. They left everything to go with Jesus. Because they knew there was something about that man that they knew he was the Christ. He was the savior of the world, and they were going to go and be with him. And that's how we must be. There are three levels of your growth in Christ. Let's look at them. There are three levels to your growth in Christ. The first level is a Christian. Is a Christian. That's one who experiences who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, but has done nothing more with it than what they received. They go to church. They come to meet their friends. They socialize. They have a good time. You know, we tell each other our problems. <laughs> and we go home. And we'll do it again Sunday. 
That's the first level. How many of you have met some of them? I've met some of them. Yeah. The next level is a believer. Something happens to that Christian. Something spectacular, something, a miracle happened. Whether it was a healing, whether it was some type of supply, uh, was supplied by God, and oh my goodness, there's another level to this thing. That God is faithful and he's true. And nobody's turning me around. I believe God. And, you know, but it becomes, what happens is it becomes more about them than it does about them. It becomes more about you and less about people. Because I want to experience that, that rush again. I want to experience that, that, that touch of God. I'm running to the altar because I want to feel God. That is so temporary and fleeting. And from moment to moment, kindness to kindness, goodness to goodness, that's not how God intends for us to live. He wants you to live in the blessing all of the time. And the thing that causes us to move into the blessing is the next level, and that's discipleship. A disciple is a chosen one to do the work of God. Sometimes in a five-fold ministry, and definitely in the gifts of the Spirit, and going about with the power of God. But see, the gifts are not just the nine gifts of the Spirit. It's, it's administration. There's a gift in administration. There's gifts in helps. There's gifts in government. People have amazing gifts that they have yet to tap into and really understand really what they can do. It is more than just the nine. It is so much more. It's, uh, it's more than the five-fold ministry. You know, uh, uh, evangelists, teachers, prophets, you know, that kind of stuff, the pastors and teachers and things like that. It is, it is so much more. The body is made up of so many members and so much that needs to be supplied. Everyone is significant, and no one is insignificant. Not to God. Now to people, that may be the case, but not to God. And what you have to begin to realize, and me too, all the time, I have to realize that I am significant, and I do have something to contribute, and I do have something to give to the body, and a lot of times we don't realize that we do. So we sit in the corner and try to hide. And I want to get in, I want to get out, and I want to not bother anybody and nobody bother me. But God didn't call us to do that. He called us to be a part of the body as a whole. I believe God has handpicked some to do the work of God because he knows the heart of man. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows the disciples. He knows, he says, many are called, but few are chosen. But he knows the chosen ones because you know what? I, I, the ones that, that really go beyond, you gotta, I bet if you stopped and you really thought about it, you could always remember the touch of God. There was something that drew you to him, even in your worst of times. There was something that was missing in your life that you were drawn to, that you were, you were, you, you, you were just, it was like a magnet that just drew you to him. And there was something in you that, that loved beyond anything else. And it, it, you know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. And I believe the people that come to LifePoint are called for such a time like that, that they are the disciples of today. 
They are the disciples of today. A disciple is a follower. Not a follower of things that are evil, but I think things that are good. But a disciple can be one who follows evil. It, it just depends on what you want to be a disciple of. But a disciple of Christ is one who follows after Christ hard. It is, he is an, or she is an adherent, a believer, an admirer, a devotee, a pupil, a student, a learner, an upholder, a supporter, an advocate, a proponent. They add, they don't subtract. They, they, they multiply. They, 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 they complement. They are truly an asset to everything they touch and everything that they do. Let's go to John 15 and 16. I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Bible. John 15 and 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name as my represent representative, he may give to you. You are a representative of Christ in the earth. You are the hands and the voice of God and Christ as you walk and talk and as you, you touch people's lives, you are God's represent, representative. Let's go to Luke 14. Verse 25 through 27. I like the easy to read version. It was um, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it in the New King James Version after that. You understand why I went to the easy to read. Because, yeah, it kind of pricks your heart and you're like, oh, that was kind of hard, God. So I kind of, I kind of, e we're going to ease into it. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna soften the blow a little bit. That's Luke 14, verse 25 through 27. It says, many people were traveling with Jesus. And he said to them, if you come to me, but will not leave your family, you cannot be my follower. You must love me more than your father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, even more than your own life. Whoever will not carry the cross that is given to them when they follow me cannot be my follower. That's a deep statement. Let's go to the King, New King James. We're going to read the same thing in the New King James Version. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You know, what I realized as I, I, I desire to be a disciple, that when I give up everything, I get everything. I don't lose anything by being a follower of Christ. If, if, if I make the choice to preach this gospel, and there are times when I kind of give up a picnic 
or I got to give up a, a vacation or, or a ride somewhere or a day at the pool or, or whatever it is or a family reunion or whatever because I know that God has called me to do something else. He's not going to let me lose. He's not going to let me lose my family. He's not going to let me lose the love that I have and the love that they have for me. He's going to, I'm going to gain so much more. You know, and some people have done it uh, badly. I think they took that a little bit too hard and they didn't take the time to really minister to their children and minister to their family the love of Jesus Christ. Because it's both. You have to love both. You have to, you have to learn to teach your children the importance of preaching the gospel, the importance of souls and people dying in the world, and that we got to go. We got to go and tell them, because who will? There are many that will, but I'm talking about you. So it's like, and he's talking about me. Will I go? And I said, yes, I'll go. And so God doesn't allow you to, to lose out in any form or fashion, but he causes your life to be multiplied and increased. And just know that God is doing something inside your family and inside of you. Amen. Let's go to Mark 10. Because I believe everyone at Life Point has chosen to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't think that anybody can come in here and sit down for too long before they'll realize that I got to get up and I got to do something and I got to get serious with this thing. I can't just play with the Bible. I can't just put it on a coffee table anymore. I can't, I can't just put it under the bed or forget it in the trunk of the car. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, and, and so, you know, you're going you're gonna to get that conviction of the Holy Spirit, and he's just going to say, no, go pick it up. I got something to tell you. I got something to share with you, and that's going to be some good stuff. He doesn't call you unless he gives you good stuff. Mark 10, verse 29 and 30. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel's who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, uh-oh, with persecution. And in the age to come, eternal life. I know everybody in here knows you got an enemy. You're not gonna. You're not gonna go, go tiptoeing through the tulips. You're just not gonna do that. He's not gonna let you. He's gonna trip you up. <laughs> He's gonna come up behind you and push you. He's gonna do all kinds of stuff. But guess what? We're the big oak trees. We're the big oak trees. You may push me, but I'm pushing back. And I know what to do. I know how to get out my sword, and I know how to get out the word of God, and I know how to tell the enemy exactly who he is. And also remind him of who I am. And no matter what comes and what goes out of my life, I know who I am. And you got to know who you are. That no matter what you think you're giving up, God is multiplying it. And he's making it better. He says, how do I become a disciple? There's three major elements of becoming a disciple. Three major elements of becoming a disciple. Number one. An insatiable hunger for God. An insatiable hunger for God. Well, you cannot, it is not, it's not even possible for, it, for your Bible to sit there for a week. It's just not possible. You can't get enough of God's presence, his word, and his love. 
Your worship goes to another level. Your prayer time goes to another level. Your love walk goes to another level. Your word level goes to another level. Because you cannot get enough. That's a disciple. That's a disciple. Those guys literally ministered to one another every day. They lived with each other. They were around each other every day. They went and ministered. They went out in the street every day. Hmm. That's insatiable. That's insatiable. All right. Matthew 14 and 27. Got a lot of scripture. Hope you're writing them down. Because it, it passes through the ear. And oh my goodness, it, it, it takes some time to get into the heart. Matthew 14, 27. It says, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You got to be in hot pursuit of Jesus. He says, I would rather you be hot or cold and never be lukewarm because I'll just spew you out of my mouth. And I don't think God gets any, any pleasure out of people who take church and time with God so casual. It is so vital to the people of God, or I'm sorry, to the people of the world, as well as to the people of God, our temperature level and where we are. Number two, a commitment to daily time and study and meditation of the word of God. A commitment. That I set a time, a time that I am going to study, that I am going to spend time with God, that I am going to be in his presence so that I can hear from the commander on high. We are soldiers in an army. And if we're not listening and hearing from the commander, guess what? We're going to probably go in the wrong direction. We're probably going to do the wrong thing. We're probably going to say the wrong thing. Because we're not listening to the voice of the spirit of the living God. And we've got to press in and, and, and get, get our direction and get our orders on what we do. And that's daily. That's daily. It says a commitment to daily, to daily time and study and meditation of the word. No condemnation for your lack of time. No condemnation for your lack of time. Come on. But your life will show the lack of time in the word. And he's going to let you know. I don't have to say a word. <laughs> I don't have to get up here and teach this. He's going to tell you, your life is going to show it. Your frustration, your anger, your, your sadness and depression, your, 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 your life is going to be, feel the, the heaviness of the world. Because it's just, it's just that. It's heaviness. And if we aren't getting relief from the word, if we're not getting a, a daily dose and a, and a washing of the water of the word every day, we're going to feel the heaviness of the world. And we're going to be get, it's going it's gonna, to it's gonna pull us and it's going gonna, it's gonna to lean on us. It's going to, ugh, until, until all of a sudden we're tired, we're frustrated, <clears throat> we're frustrated, we're we're angry, and we don't even know why. And then the Holy Spirit, he'll say, when's the last time you spent time with me? When's the last time we really went through the word together? When's the last time you asked me what I thought? Or what you should do? Ask me. I'll tell you. This is a must to grow and become equipped in the word and in deed. 
Um, we'll be, we'll, won't want to do anything for the church, really, because of the heaviness of the world. We won't really want to do anything for God because the enemy will so mask our talents and, and tell us that that's really, you're really not good at that. You know, and it's not the truth. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2.15. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. 2 Timothy 2.15. It says, study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God, approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing rightly and rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. That's what you become. That's what you become when you spend time with God. You begin to accurately divide the, the word of God. You're not ashamed. You're not ashamed because you know what you know. You don't have to know everything. You got a testimony. I've told you that before. The greatest, the greatest thing that you could tell people out in the world is your testimony and what God has done for you. You don't have to know where everything is in the Bible to tell somebody about the goodness of God and what he's done. But correctly analyzing and accurately, you begin to grow in these things. You begin to know where the scripture is. You begin to, to, to know the word of God. It just flows out of your belly that word of living uh, water, that, that life-giving source begins to flow out of you. Let's go to Colossians 1.23. Colossians 1.23. This is in the King James Version. It says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. You are made a minister of Christ. Don't try to shy away from it. Just accept it. Just embrace it. Enjoy it. And spend time with God. He'll tell you everything. He'll give you everything you need. He'll give you every, every instruction. He'll even give you the words out of your mouth. I said, Lord, I don't know what to say today. He's talking. I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I'm just listening and opening up my mouth and allowing him to do the work and do, do, do the saying because I don't know what to say to you. But he knows, and he knows exactly what you need. And when you meet somebody in the street, he'll know exactly what to say. You don't have to be rehearsed. You don't have to have your little notes in your pocket and say, okay, well, Jesus said. God's going to give you exactly what to say. Number three. Number three in becoming a disciple. A no fear, I'm here walking in the power of God attitude. I'm not going nowhere. And no matter what, how the devil pushes, no matter how he he, he tries to shove me and get me out of the way and tries to, you know, bring sickness on my body or, or whatever he tries to do. I'm not going anywhere. I have no fear of man or what they say to me. I used to. I used to, I used to care a lot about what people said about me, but I don't care because I know my heart and I know my desire, and my desire is for men's souls. I got the will and the, and the desire of God. I don't have the will and desire of Lynette anymore because I made a decision to be a disciple and I made a decision that I'm going to follow Christ and I'm going to follow after him hard. I'm not going to lightly tip, tiptoe around and just you know, see what I can see. I'm, no, I'm, gonna, I'm going after him hard. I'm pulling at the hem of his garment. I'm like, oh, God, no, no, no. I, I want you to talk to me today. A no fear, I am here walking in the power. You have the power of Christ on the inside of you. He says he wants us to go into all the earth and preach this gospel. He said laying hands on the sick so that they would recover. 
rebuking and, and casting out devils, raising the dead. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're supposed to be doing as disciples of Jesus Christ. That takes being fed in the presence and in the word each day. Faith cancels out fear, but fear cancels out faith. Don't let fear get into your heart. Don't let fear get into your, into your mind. Don't let fear get into, into your, your life so that it will begin to cancel out your faith in God. Keep your faith alive with the feeding of the word of God and sitting squarely at his feet, learning of him. That has to be deliberate. That can't be, that can't be something that, that, that you fall into. You have to be deliberate about your decision and deliberate about your time with God. Matthew 11 and 29. Matthew 11 and 29. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and I'm lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. I know that sounds gentle and it doesn't sound big and bad and tough, but it is far from that. At times when need be, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a daily battle. But you know what? He's equipping you for the fight. He's equipping you for the battle, and, 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 and the more you feed into him, the more equipped you'll become. So don't not spend the time that you need in order to equip yourself. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58. You can tell I studied a lot. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Nothing you do is in vain for the Lord. 1 Timothy 5, uh, 6 and 12. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. A disciple is not ashamed of the gospel. He tells it on the rooftop and he screams it from the mountains that our God reigns. And let everyone know, he, they let everyone know that you too can reign with him. That you don't have to be alone in your struggle. You don't have to be alone trying to make things work. That God is right there with you. If we're gonna, if we're gonna be disciples of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has got to be the gentlest man that ever lived. But yet he was strong. I loved how he threw out those money changers. I love how he went in there so nicely, and he just, he gave them what for? He did, didn't he? <laughs> he was highly intelligent, but could speak to all men. He spoke to sinners and common men, because he knew who he was. He was loving, but yet a taskmaster. He had three years to teach his disciples how to be a disciple. That's not a long time, but he did it. And even, even the one denied him three times. And others, you know, ran away. But when the Holy Spirit came and baptized them on that day, they were changed men. And they began to preach that gospel with such fire that's why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is an important, important event in your life. If you have not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you need to get baptized. Because it is a change of life 
that will bring power to your life like you've never had before. He was compassionate but wise to follow the voice of God. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't go to everybody. Everybody came to him. But he didn't go to everybody. He listened for the voice of God before he stepped, before he went, because he knew there was a purpose in what God was saying. And he wasn't doing anything without a purpose in the way God said go. He was called to be about the Father's business from the very beginning, and so are we. We are called to be about the Father's business. Acts 10.38 says, And as you know, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And his disciples, as his disciples, he was, he's with us also as we go. He went about doing good and healing. That's what we're supposed to do as disciples of God to go about doing good and healing. And if we're not, then we have to check our life and begin to say, God, how do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to go with? But I want to go. I'm going. (laughs) It's become one of my favorite sayings now. To love people enough to preach, teach, and reach them with the uncompromised word of God right here in Iowa City, Iowa. Basically, it's all about going beyond ourselves to love. No matter how bad they look or act or smell or are, we love them. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if they've been they've been sleeping under a bridge. Doesn't matter if they walk through here and she's she's just come off the street. Doesn't matter if 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 somebody is is in a homosexual relationship. It does not matter. We love them. We love them. Doesn't matter if he just spent the last fifty years in prison. It doesn't matter. We're called to love them, yes. no matter what. What does love look like? Loving them beyond the pain. Loving them beyond the hurt, the disappointments, the lack. Every one of us go through something. We're in some type of form of pain. We're in some type of form of possible lack. We're in some type of uh, place in our life where we're dis- we've been disappointed, we've been let down, but yet... We are called to love others. Even in the midst of it all, we're called to love. It takes God to teach us to love deeply like that. Love is truthful. Love is accountability. Love can be tough, but it's real. We don't love them if we aren't doing all that we can to reach them. We want to reach people with every available voice. We want to reach them through the website, through Facebook, through constant contact, through the radio, through television, through mailings, through outreaches, through the van ministry, through programs for children and adults, concerts, conferences, life groups, seminars, and more. And you're a part of that. You're a part of that. What's your part? What's your part? Ask God. You're not here. You're not here to sit here. You're not here to sit here. You are here to do. You are here to love people. You are here to love people. We want to live, we want to love them to build this building or buildings. Because if we don't build it, I don't want to get like the, the movie. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> if we don't build it, they're not going to come. All right. <laughs> How can we help them? 
We are so limited here at the hotel and what we're able to accomplish for people. People are still calling, still thinking we still have a building, and yet we have no place to bring them. We have no, we have no place to, uh, to counsel them, to, to, to get them up on their feet. How, how many of you know that with strangers out there in the world, you can't just bring people to your house? <laughs> That's not a safe thing to do. It's just not safe, okay, to, to just bring people to your house. So you, you, you got to gotta know how important this building is. Um, we want them to have a place of worship and of learning and growing and healing and restoration and growing in the knowledge of God. That's what a building does for them. That's, that's, what, that's what it's going to do. But it starts first with our love. It starts first with our desire to serve at home right here, where we are right now, serving. Um, we come into the house of God to empty, to empty, to be filled again, to overflowing. I heard somebody say, uh, it was a song they were singing, it's something about, Lord, I want to empty myself in your presence. Yes, we want to empty ourselves of all the junk and all the gook and all the hardness but we want to fill ourselves in this house. Amen. We want to be so full when we leave here, we're overflowing, and that we give it out all week long, and we come in empty again, ready to be filled by God again. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Remember a disciple has an insatiable hunger for God. It takes daily time in the word and study of the word. This is your homework. Couldn't skip the homework. I skipped a few things. I know, I did a lot of studying. Homework, take a scripture this week and memorize and meditate on it. But then I want you to use it throughout the day on someone else. I want you to use it, okay? I want you to use it on somebody. Okay, an example, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Uh, you know, meditating, okay? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass, brass or a clanging cymbal. When you're just talking to somebody, because that's your meditation scripture, you can say, you know, I'm learning about love. <laughs> and I'm learning that, you know, if I don't have it, I'm just making noise. Right. I just sound, I, I, you know, I'm just clanging, and, you know, I'm like a, a noisy symbol if I have not love. So I'm learning to love. You know, that's in 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. <laughs> and just take some time to use that scripture and watch one see that you'll never forget it. And that'll be a part of your arsenal later on that you can pull out and be able to use it on the enemy. Are you ready for that? No fear, I'm here. Walking in the power of God attitude. That's a disciple. No fear, I'm not going anywhere, I'm here and I'm walking in the power. Amen? Amen. That's you. There is a greater you on the inside of you. Amen. You've been telling yourself that? You know that was your homework. You're supposed to be looking in the mirror and saying, there is a greater you on the inside of you and begin to walk it out. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, there's a greater you on, you, in the, on the inside of you. Pull him out and use him. The world is waiting on you. The world is waiting on you. And I know you're like, on me? Yep. Yep. Somebody is waiting on the other side of your obedience. And they need you. They need you to speak a word in season to them, to encourage them, to love them, 
and to take them to the next step in their life, whether they're Christians, whether they're non-believers completely, whether they're Christians or just believers. We can take them to a place of discipleship where they are really have this insatiable desire for God. Amen? Amen. 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 We're done. Did you get something? Yes. I hope so. I, I'm, I'm going to take, a, I'm gonna take a, a, a poll next time to see how many people had uh, the most pages of notes. <laughs> Look, I got two hands right there. <laughs> I'm going to take a poll to see how many people took that many notes because you ain't that smart, guys. I'm telling you, you're not that smart. When you can't take notes and you can remember all this stuff and be able to apply it throughout the, your, uh, your, your week and all that kind of stuff, you're just not that great. You're not that great. You know, so, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to be able to take notes. Uh, it, is, it is said that those that take notes learn more. Amen? Amen. Well, you want me to dismiss Pastor Tommy? You go ahead and stand on your feet, guys. Well, it has been a joy. Um, I am going to hand this uh, wonderful mic back to Pastor Tommy next week. <laughs> I'm going back to prayer. Hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, where, where I love and, uh, and allow him to preach the word of God to you. And, uh, but keep praying. Keep praying about the building. Yes. Keep praying about uh, the finances and the things that, and like I said last week, if you uh, have been a part of a building plan before or if you've heard of different things or whatever, um, please let uh, myself or Pastor Tommy or Mandy Mobley uh, know uh, what, what those ideas are. Um, because this is our first time doing a building fund. And it's our first time doing a campaign for, for a building. And, and so we, don't, we want to do our best to spread it out to anybody who is willing and wants to know more about our vision. And, uh, and so if you know, then please let us know so that we can, we can uh, do this quickly. In Jesus' name. Well, Father God, thank you so much for this time that we've had together. I thank you, God, that you, you bring us together as a body to make us equipped and stronger. You cause us to be uh, prepared for tomorrow. And even today, uh, there might be somebody that comes across our path today that needs to know about being a disciple uh, or even needs to know more about loving other people and reaching people with the love of Jesus Christ, with the uncompromised word. They might need to know that. And what we've learned today, we can share. And so, God, thank you for giving us opportunities to share the word of God that we've learned today. And that, we, that it won't go in just our hearts to, to, to go into some uh, library back on a shelf, but it's actually going to be used. And, God, thank you. Thank you for our worship this week and, and all the times and that we're going to spend time with you, that we're going to sit at your feet this week and we're going to spend some time with you so that you could tell us things and begin to show us our life and show us where we're going and show us how to get there. And we thank you, God, for it, the time that you're going to spend with us and that you're longing for it right now. And we thank you for it. Keep us safe as we are away from, away from each other during this week, that God, the angels of the Lord are encamped around about them, taking them from place to place, from, from wherever they're going to and back home again. And so God, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.